express and to support this family this morning as they have suffered a great loss. But from the onset, God is able. Soon you will understand. So again, I say welcome to all, and we want to begin. Let us all stand for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we give you praise and thanks and adoration that you are God, and there is none else. You have created us, we are your people, and the sheep of your pasture. And we thank you for the blessing that you have given to all of us throughout our lives. This morning here, we have lost a loved one. And we are here, O oh righteous Father, because we are hurting, we are grieved. But we know that as a father pitied his children, so the Lord pitied them that love him. So we want to ask that you will comfort all that are here this morning that you'll give us a word to strengthen our hearts, that you'll give us a song to sing praises to you in spite of our condition, in spite of what has happened, knowing that God know it and do it all things well. So we commit the proceedings this morning into your hands. We ask for the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit to attend us this morning and set your angels in this place and comfort those that are bereaved this morning. For we ask in Jesus' name. Have your seats. We just want to do a few songs. I'm going to sing, I'm going to shout praise. Hallelujah. 
want to call on Amanda and Kiel to come and do our opening prayer for us. I don't know if they're, they're, they are here already. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Please bow our heads, please. <laughs> Dear Lord Father, we gather in unity today to mourn the death of our loved one, Saminsha Ram Charita. We loved her so much, but you loved her more and have brought her into your presence. Father, we are here to celebrate someone that we have cherished and loved. Our hearts are full of hope that we will see her again, see her again when we go home to you. I am so thankful for the times you gave us to share with her who is now resting in your glory. Thank you, Father, for giving us the strength to gather in this place today for a service in her honor. Let the lights of our loved one, Sumitra Ram Charita, be illuminated in our lives and shine throughout the service. We pray for everyone here that you guide and protect them, and may we share the memories of her forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. And now we're going to have a few words from Janice. Good morning, everyone. I am, I am very thankful for everything and everyone here, right? From the bottom of my heart, all you would know, you know? And I thank you all, and I want to let some enjoy go in peace. Let her be able to enjoy her next life in heaven, oh, Father. You know, and I thank each and everyone again and again for all the support throughout the years that you all have given to me, and all who are home, you lift us up. And I continue to thank you, and I continue to praise God for giving me the strength and the courage to carry every day and to see about Samantha. Because to see about a sick one of you all is not an easy task. And we each and everyone take our part. And I want to give God all the praise and the glory here this morning that I am able to stand before each and every one of you all. And I carry on. And whatever the days ahead bring, I know the Lord will carry me through again. And I continue to give him praise, honor, and glory. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart again for this moment that you are sharing with me today. And I thank you again. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray. Thanking you. Amen. Thank you, Praise the Lord. Thank you so very much. Now we want to stand and sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Now we have our eulogy by Samantha and Antonio. Sumanjar Amjarita, a.k.a. Sumsum, better known as Slim, was born on the 29th October 1963. Oh. She was the second child of the late Aaron and the late Eileen Ramcharita. Always a big, rounded, and full-figured person, Slim used to joke and say, well, I born on a full moon night. So I come out just like the moon, big, round, and full. Auntie was the life of the party, bubbly and jovial, known for her wise cracking jokes and quick-witted remarks. You better had some good comebacks, otherwise you're sure to get roasted. If you say A, she say B. If you say Y, she say Z. Just ask dog. A prankster to her heart, she loved to pull little tricks on you. Poor Miss Arthur was nearly out of breath after running down to Malabar Branch Road when Sumincha told her to go see what happened after hearing a blaring siren. Miss Arthur took off down the road, only to find out it's not that place, but two roads lower down. Sumsum was like her play wife, like her play way too as she and Mrs. Charmaine Gardner, a teacher from ANG, would have daily conferences on what mark to play and how much to play it for. Slim was a boss of a cook, as she used to say, I like my belly, I like to eat. If you're hungry, you know who to go buy for a little something to eat. Even if she didn't have any food prepared, she would go and whip up something be it her delicious pilori and aloo pies, or the Sunday food, you're sure to get something to carry to. Auntie could a dance and pelt waist real good. In her early days, she would be seen with Pa Aaron beating Tasa at Indian weddings. She loved to have a good time and was always ready to go and enjoy herself, whether it be at home, a little fete, Juve by the river and camping in Toku, where you're sure to get lessons in floating. She was all about family and never hesitated to render assistance when needed. She was also the driver back in the days. All you had to say was, Sum, Sum, let me go and she ready. Auntie, you have come to the end of your earthly journey, but beginning your heavenly one. May your transition to meet your creator be equally special and fulfilling. Say hello to Pa Aaron, Tanti Boy, and all the others who have made that divine voyage. Sleep in eternal peace, Auntie Sum, until we see each other again, for we will surely meet again. Love you, Auntie, always. Praise the Lord. Now we will have our word for today. Our sermon for today. And let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you that you are a God of love, a God of justice, and a God of mercy. 
You have said that we shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. And so strengthen our faith this morning. Dry our tears this morning. De be divinely close to us this morning, for we need you now more than ever. Bless our hearts, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. God is love. God is just in all his dealings with mankind. The Bible tells us, ladies and gentlemen, in Revelation chapter 21 from verse 1, the Bible tells us that God is preparing a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. The Bible also gives us more information that in the new heaven and in the new earth that God is preparing, there'll be no more debt. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more pain. There'll be no more suffering. For the Bible tells us that the former things are passed away. God will make all things new. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that God will wipe away all the tears of his children. Why does God have to wipe away tears from his children? Brothers and sisters, we live in a world that has fallen to sin. The Bible in Genesis tells us that Satan deceived our first parents, Adam and Eve. And our whole world was plunged into sin. There is not one of us here on this planet that is safe. The Bible tells us that death has come through transgression. And Satan took this world captive under his hand. And so all of us here, with the, with the exception of none, we are dying. And one day, we too will have to face death. But the Bible gives us hope, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible tells us that wherein Satan deceived our first parents and sin entered into this world and death came by sin and man was held captive by Satan, somebody say, praise the Lord. The Bible tells us that God, our Heavenly Father, sent forth his only begotten Son to rescue the human race. So this morning, we are not without hope this morning. God has promised us that even though our world has fallen to sin, that he would send help to rescue us. And the Bible tells us that when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son into this world to rescue mankind from the hands of the enemy. Now the scriptures testify to us that whosoever believe it, and is baptized, the same shall be saved, ladies and gentlemen. So in this world that we are living here, we are not without hope. God has given us hope in that he has sent Jesus to rescue the entire human race. The Bible tells us, ladies and gentlemen, that this world will be on fire. All the elements of this world will burn with fervent heat. And I would want to read that for us this morning from the book of 2 Peter. The book of 2 Peter. I'm going to read that for us this morning. It says here in 2 Peter that the Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? looking for and hastening to the coming of the day of the Lord, 
wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the element shall melt with heat. This is the word of the Lord. But the Bible starts by telling us that God is not slack concerning his promises, but he's long suffering towards all men that none should perish. God doesn't want a soul that has been born in this world that is his creation to perish under the hand of Satan. Not one he wants to perish. Sometimes he asks why it is a man has committed such crime. He has murdered somebody or raped somebody or stolen that which doesn't belong to him. Why doesn't God bring justice and do something? The cry of many is for justice. Well, the Bible gives us the answer. The Bible tells us that to that murderer, to that raper man, to that liar, God is long-suffering. God does not want him to perish. But rather, he is extending his time so that he can have an opportunity to turn around. He can have an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to turn around. Because at the appointed time, every man shall be given. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord go to and fro the earth and he beholds all the doings of men. He beholds everything that is going on and sometimes things happen to us and we can't figure out why. Sometimes it is retributive justice for what we have done that we thought we escaped from. God is merciful and God is gracious. Somebody say praise the Lord. The Bible tells us in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 11, hear what the Bible tells us here. In Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 11, the scriptures tells us that and say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But that the wicked man turn from his way and live. Turn ye from your ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Ladies and gentlemen, God has no pleasure in the destruction of any one of us. He doesn't delight in punishing men, but rather God loves us. The Bible tells us that God is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And every one of us that is suffering here this morning, God is suffering in it with us. Because he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And this too will pass. This too will pass. The pain, the suffering will pass because we serve a mighty God. He is mighty to save and strong to deliver. He is able to comfort us through all our situations and bring us out safely on the other side. Well, some people may say, Pastor, why then will God put us to hell? Why will we go to hell and burn if we are lost? Well, this morning I want to tell us that the Bible, contrary to popular belief, doesn't really teach that. In the book of Luke, Luke chapter 12, hear what the Bible says. The Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 47, it says, Luke chapter 12 and verse 47. Make sure I have the writing here. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that know not, and did commit things worthy of stripe, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whom much is given, much is required. So the Bible tells us that God is just. God is going to give every man according as his works shall be. Not even if a man is lost, God is interested in, in burning him. Which parents, you know, will start to beat a child today and beat the child at the end of the year, still for the same crime? 
If men being evil don't do these things, neither does our Heavenly Father do these things. But rather, God is a God of love. In the book of Revelation, it tells us, Revelation chapter 14, it tells us here, in Revelation chapter 14, sorry, Revelation 22, 14, it says here, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to every man according as his works shall be. So every man will receive as his work shall be. In Thessalonians, it tells us, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. All who, are, all who die in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air where we shall reign with our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Revelation 20 and verse 4 that we go to heaven for 1,000 years and then we come back with new Jerusalem to live upon the earth. The Bible tells us that the lamb and the lion will dwell here together. The Bible tells us that we shall go forth and build houses and plant vineyards. The Bible tells us that sin will never raise its head a second time. There will be no more sin. There will be no more sinner in the earth made new. No more sin. No more crying. No more suffering. No more pain. No more sorrow. God, ladies and gentlemen, has given all of us hope. And one day we will see the lady that is there, we're going to see her again. We all will see each other again on one side of the fence or the other. So this morning, ladies and gentlemen, to have an entrance into the earth made new, the Bible tells us that a man and a woman must be born again. You must be born of water and of the spirit because human beings lack the spirit of God. God has made us. We are his temple the Bible says, Know ye not that your bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. God de desires to dwell inside of us. He has made us that he should dwell in us and not the devil. I don't know if you have any seen anybody that was demon possessed. How Satan takes this temple and that where God should dwell and he seeks to dwell in it. But this temple is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That is why God says a man must be born again or else he is weak and feeble and he cannot match the devil. And that is why the devil causes men to eat from trash can and drink drain water because they are in bondage and they cannot free themselves. But the Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And so this morning I am, I am declaring the truth. I am almost at an end but I am declaring the truth this morning that there is no entrance into the earth made new if you are not born of water so that you can be given the spirit. Must be born. The Bible says that that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. So when a man and a woman is born from their mother's womb, the only works they could perform is the works of the flesh. And the works of the flesh is to steal and lie and gossip and backbite and hate and murder and rape these are the works of the flesh and these are the only works that we can do without the new birth experience but the bible says that when we are born again we are given the spirit and the works of the spirit is love and joy and peace and gentleness and goodness and faith and long suffering ladies and gentlemen the bible tells us that we become a new in Christ Jesus, we begin to develop a character for the earth made new. And so this morning, I invite all of us here to be born again, to give our hearts and our lives to Jesus Christ. I invite us all this morning, ladies and gentlemen, because the Bible tells us that God has given us a name under heaven whereby men must be saved, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess 
unto the glory of the Father. That Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ has been just to all of us. That Jesus Christ has been merciful to all of us. Most of us know that we have done things that we do not deserve. We know ourselves. We know our heart. We know our lives. We know. Yet still God has extended his mercy towards us. Not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, we have another opportunity at this funeral here to give our lives to Jesus so that we can prepare for when our time comes to face the grave, we too can be prepared. We will not have fear if we are prepared to face the grave. We will not fear. And so this morning, give your heart to Jesus. Surrender your lives to Jesus. Learn to love your creator and to walk in his ways this morning. God is love. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Strengthen us, O righteous Father. Keep us by your divine love. Hold those that are grieving in your hands. Mold them and fashion them, O God. Be merciful and gracious unto them. Tender as you have promised unto them. For you are great. You are good. You are loving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now, we're going to have our final commendation and we're going to have that song I am walking on my way to the Lord I am walking on my way to the Lord do you, do you have it came up on the phone it didn't come up pastor you know that song I'm walking on the way could you come sing it for us please right yeah, it is on the sheet, but to sing it. <laughs> you have, give me, bring Praise your phone. The bring your phone. Bring your phone with the music. Yeah, just now. Sing it. I know. Let's all stand. And we want to sing this song. The Lord, it's right in the sheet there. Yeah? I'm walking on my way to the Lord, to my Lord, to my Lord house. I'm walking on my way to the Lord, to my Lord who's waiting there for me. So let us join hands and praise the Lord. Yes, to our Lord. Lord, Lord, oh, to our Lord's house, so let us join hands and praise the Lord. To our Lord, who's waiting patiently, I'm singing on my way to the Lord. Oh, to my Lord, 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 to my Lord's house, I'm singing on my way to the Lord. My Lord, you've waited there for me. So let us join hands and praise the Lord. Oh, to my Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, to my Lord, house. So let us join hands and praise the Lord. Oh, to my Lord, who's waiting patiently. 
I'm clapping, I'm clapping on my way to the Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, to my Lord, 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 to my Lord's house. I'm clapping on my way to the Lord, oh, to my Lord, who's sitting there for me. So let us join hands and praise the Lord. Oh, to my Lord, 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 to my Lord's house. So let us join hands and praise the Lord. Oh, to my Lord, whose faith and passion Praise the Lord. God bless you. In Jesus' name. very much faster all right so we are coming to the end of things here now and we want to organize to view the body and while we do that we will be playing down on my knees as we get ready to close off we want to call on first of all on Wendell Right, to come see our closing prayer for us and to say a few words if you would like to. After which, we're going to open the box and view the body in an orderly manner. This guy here will tell us how to as we usher out. Good morning, everybody. Ball heads, close your eyes. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of this earthly life. Hear our prayers and comfort us. Amen. We thank you for the life of Suman Sharam Charita, for all the years you gave us with her. We thank you for all the memories, whether it be good or bad. We shared love, joy, sorrow with her. We shared pain. We want to thank you for all suffering and pain that you went through that she is not suffering anymore. Amen. Blessed be with the benefits of Jesus, death and resurrection. Let us look with faith to the day when Jesus will return. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we will get we will enjoy the fullness of your promises for eternity. We hope that one day you will re reunite us with Sumantra. We want to shower shower her sons, Stephen and Skeet. Give them peace. Let them look after each other. Amen. For all our family and friends who was with us these past days, thank you for everyone who came apart, who came together and to recollect and who knew Sumatra. May she find it eternal peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, and God bless. So now we will. All right. So he said that we'll pass up this end and view and head out to the outside.
Thank you. 